VIP Access access. with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. I'm super excited to have you here on Boxing Day. And I'm also very happy to be hosting an international man. He's a fashion designer. He's a musician. He's also a psychologist and a man who works between Kenya and the Netherlands. Welcome, Steve Biko. With many thanks, I say (laughs) I feel so welcome at, at home. As in, this is where I want to be right now. Wait, that voice, this voice, <laughs> the voice is giving, it's giving, it's giving radio. <laughs> and it's not a surprise that you are actually a radio presenter right here in Kenya. I think a lot of you know this voice or has have seen this face. Could you take me back to that time when you were on radio? I think when we actually met, you were at Capitol for a short while, yeah. but you also worked at Uptown Radio when Uptown Radio was Uptown Radio. OMG. <laughs> okay. Begin from the, the topest, like the, the highest part of the hill. That was Uptown Radio. Yeah. When like the whole afternoon on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the whole of Nairobi was jamming to Uptown Radio on public transport in the ghetto. Up downtown, in La Vie, it was like we were holding the city down the dance hall vibes. And Upton Radio was a, a homeboy's baby. It was a homeboy's and baby. And a Jimani baby. It, it, yeah, yeah. Those are accurate, two very accurate <laughs> things you just said. Jimani was holding Upton Radio on his lap and, and homeboys was providing the food. Look, look mm. at it like that, you know. Homeboys were actually the, the ones that were injecting the necessary for money mm. <laughs> to keep this baby alive. Yeah, and we were behind the mic telling people what they needed to hear. Mm. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So, um, for those who are watching, I'm always painting a picture to the kind of um guests I'm having, and also for those who are listening, um, Steve Biko, I would describe you as um a man about town. Yeah, you know, you are very well versed with um, you know, everything happening around the world, everything happening in Africa. Yeah. You love style, you love fashion, yeah. you're a designer um of Biko O2, which is yeah. a fashion brand based in Amsterdam, but also operating in Nairobi. Um, you know, we've been friends for a long time. Um, we met through Saudi Soul, you know, you ended up actually getting married to Saudi Soul's first manager. So we've always been family. And um, it's just such a pleasure to see how you have morphed into very many um, professionals and in throughout the years. Like you actually do wear a lot of hats. Could you explain to me all the different things that you do and how you manage to find time for each one of your passions? I think I, I left Kenya as a fashion designer and as, as a radio presenter, you know, and um, I was looking for a way to connect my worlds. And, and when I moved to Amsterdam, the first thing I had to do is I had to learn the language, Dutch, and that was really, really tough. And suddenly a new world opened, you know, and I was like, okay, now that I speak Dutch, what will I do with this language? How will I connect to, to these people? Mm. And, and, and the idea of psychology hit me. I was like, oh, this is the glue behind everything and everything and everything. Psychology, there's psychology of walking, psychology of flying, psychology of cooking, psychology of fashion, psychology of radio, you know. And as a radio presenter, radio is a theater of the mind. I was always interested in creeping into people's minds and and actually speaking to them in in a way that they understand. And radio is a personal thing. You listen to it alone. Most people have radio in the shamba, in the bedroom, in the bathroom while dressing, in the car, personal, all cozy. It was me and them. When it comes to therapy as a psychologist, it's the same, same thing. I sit with people at the table, I creep into their minds, and we figure out how to make their world what they want it to be. So, so, so that the psychology, for me, was the glue to be able to join fashion and music and my new social world, this new language, and have a profession that actually made sense in the Netherlands. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What about being um, an African designer in, in, in Amsterdam? You know, what's that like? Because from where I sit, you know, in Kenya and Africa, there's this excitement that everyone is looking to, um, you know, wear African, listen to African music. So, you know, for you as, a, as an African, you know, living in, in Europe, you are a fashion designer and your clothes and brand is very distinctively African. Your music the same, um, even though you do collaborate with uh, European artists. So what would you say is your experience, you know, 
operating in Europe, uh, but operating uh, the kind of African art, yeah. you know? Yeah, but that is factual. Look, but my, my growing up was, America and Europe was the coolest place to be. As a, as a young man, I wore baggy jeans, I bought FUBU t-shirts, I, I had like bling bling. I looked like <laughs> I looked like Cisco. When I worked at Baraka <laughs> FM and I went to Pulse FM, we were doing a launch and I was on a camel walking through the whole city of Mombasa and I had fans, I, I looked like Cisco. I had my hair silver, I had the one way. Being cool was being American or British or something else not African. African. Oh my God, so true. And now, the tables are turned. I, I go to festivals where, like, young, white, African Europeans are listening to Afro music with, with their souls. They open their souls to that stuff. And they, 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 they're hungry for African style, for the African sound, the African spirit. It's now what is the new cool. So to me, it's like, what a time to have moved. And what an experience to have. And, and what a confrontation with my... Con I'd say confusion or bra brainwashing, to be honest. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How did I not think Africa was not cool? Who the hell told me <laughs> <laughs> that being yelly yelly is not cool? Right now, I cherish my Africanness to the core. So being an African designer in Europe is a big advantage. When it comes to selling, of course, you push to a corner because when they call you African designer, of course, you belong to a niche, mm. you know? I see myself as, as an international designer. My roots are African. My 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 conversation, my gab is African. When I open my mouth, when I get up and look at you, it, it's African, okay? But I, but I, I live in Europe, and 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 I design from Europe, and I speak a European language. I'm a European citizen. Yeah. So let's just say, um, um, I don't see the world as an African, but I live in the world as an African. That's powerful. Yeah. That is very powerful. Earlier on um, this year, I had the chance to come to Amsterdam to attend your very first major fashion show yes. where you presented a new collection, where you had a host of uh, models, some international models, you know, walking on the runway. There's, yeah. uh, you know, a specific model who I've been following from South Africa um, who was, you know, also at your fashion show. There was yeah. also a music showcase yeah. where you actually presented songs from your latest EP with your collaborators, um, I and I movement. Yeah. Could you just tell me about this huge thing that has happened to you this year where you have found a way to merge the fashion and music and this wonderful event that you put out, put together um, with your family, with your partner, with your collaborators. Yeah. There's a huge um, team that, you know, made this happen. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's a lot of work that led to that day. It was not yeah. just that day. So yeah. take me through, you know, the merging of these two different acts that you're very passionate in and how this showcase went i think that, that the magic happened on my birthday uh, it was december 13th and I, I um i i asked this rock and roll band to perform and we're in a small space and they burnt down the roof and among my circle of friends there's an international stylist called Luke van Klinsver, who i've been working with from the beginning who was interested in doing the sec second collection and i met a theater director yeah who, who, who does work at the ndsm Bear. his name is sander strat uh and um, he, he he does no open space, you know. And when I mentioned that I want to do the second collection, it was like, I'm in. I want to do it. Let's 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 combine theater with fashion and music and give these people an experience. So so that was the birth of the of the megalomaniac idea of doing this event in this huge place because I needed models, I needed money, I needed to finish the clothes. So so much work international behind international it. lights. Tell me about it. Me, and I felt like I was at Paris Fashion Week. I've never been to Paris Fashion Week, but I was in Amsterdam, but I was like, this is compliment. like... <laughs> I have a big bag here that I used to call it compliment. So I'm putting that one right in. It's Boxing Day. I'm going to open it later. That's when you open presents. Oh, Don't get God. this wrong. I mean, this level of collaboration, uh, i would never experienced before, you know? But I think it was time. And, and I was ripe. And, and, uh, and living in the Netherlands, somehow I felt like the Netherlands kind of opened up and, and and took me in and accepted me as, as part of them by working with me and bringing these things to that level. And my partner, who is who is a very, very critical, very structured, very organized person, I, I'm chaotic. I, I design in chaos. I create music in chaos. I love chaos. I play music all the time. Um, and I'm always active. And I do different things at different times. Sometimes I combine three things. And, and, and she's like, what the hell is going on? You know, <laughs> she was part of it. So for her to like hone herself into this, cocoon mm. of an explosion of creativity mm. was an, an, a matching of our energy in a very mm. special way. Yeah, and and for those who are watching, they might not also put two and two together. Um, I want to say your partner is Ninka Nauta. And Ninka Nauta, for those in the industry, if you remember, she's the 
lady and the individual who discovered Sauti Soul. You know, she discovered me, actually, my very first computer um, that I did, my very first, like, journalistic work with or PR work with, I got from Ninka. Um, she also, uh, together with her team at Penya Africa, Imekubaliwa, you know, Wawesh, Lisa, all those cool people, they set up, like, some of the dopest concerts ever here in Kenya. All of Sauti Soul's first um, concerts were produced by Ninka and her team. So the launch of Mwanzo, the launch of Soul Philosophia. Um, and um, I remember during the launch of Soul Philosophia at Alliance Francaise, I've never seen such a spectacle. People were jumping the walls of Alliance Francaise. I've never seen that ever, ever fire. again. Fire. You know, fire. I was collecting money, I remember. I was the money guy. Yes, and and it was guys, a cash situation. <laughs> and you guys had a box. I had a big bag yes. of money and I was hiding somewhere in a corner sweating. Yes, thinking, like, yes, how am yes, I going to get yes, out of yes, here? Yes. And yeah. then to kind of count it. Yeah. And that's the first time I thought like, oh my God, these guys have like, world class potential right and right. all that compliments for ninka i'm collecting them those flowers i have i put them right here because you right. said so many things about yeah her. so when we talk about like 20 years of saudi soul we we can't uh miss to talk about no, ninka no, and no, when you talk no, about no, no, the no, no. the excellence in the production of your show we also can't forget to talk about ninka and you know correlate about the fine, other work fine, that fine, she's fine, done fine. you're right i had a powerful collaborator but I didn't have one powerful collaborator. I had many powerful collaborators. Yeah. Door Open Space Fair is a fantastic place. Yeah. And Door Open Space Fair is inter international. All the models who are working like were, were, were people who, you know, who, 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 who have been in fashion for a while. And my, yeah. my, my daughter also graced the stage. So for yes. me, it was like, it was like a magical moment. And she performed. She was dancing. That was so cool. So cool. I, I ran um, short of words when I described this show, but um, I think I should tell them that it was about masculinity and, and, and masculinity is about the, the man in, in all of us and our fathers and the man in us and how we make peace or war with, with that man, you know, to make mm. this world a better place. So, so the, the whole collection, the whole performance, the whole thing, the whole statement was about masculinity. Like, are you at peace with the man in you? Are you at peace with your father? Are you at peace with the father of your father? Are you, are you a father who's at peace with, 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 with themselves and what's happening, you mm. know? And it's inside out, outside in. So, so you can dress it, you live it, you feel it, you think it, you, you give it across to your child, you know? So that was, this, that, that was what masculinity was all about. And in 2025, we have protagonism. We're going to do it in the, in the biggest forest in Amsterdam. Uh, one of our biggest collaborators is the director of Amsterdam Bush Theatre. We call it Amsterdam Bosch Theatre. He's already kind of like hands and legs in. So we're working out how to kind of put the sets together and tell mm. this protagonism story in 2025. And it's about fighting for something that means something to you. Mm. You know, we as Africans know about fighting. <laughs> we, 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 ah, right now, there are many wars in this world, man. Yeah. Ukraine. Don't talk about Palestine. Let's, let's, not, let's, let's, let's not get political, even though fashion is a political thing. Mm. So 2025, we'll be kind of looking at Pandora's box when it comes to protagonism. Like, what are you fighting for? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so be, just before we wrap up, um, I want to ask you to talk about um, your music. Yeah. Um, the EPs that yeah. have come out, yeah. those that are in collab and, um, you know, just the music side and your collab with I and I Movement from Amsterdam. Yeah. I and I movement is a is a wonderful label. It it's, it consists of people like Rebier, it consists of people like Pitch Control, Mitch, uh, uh all, all the guys from Gallo Street, you know, they're, they're a major jazz band, they, they blow you away. And and they came together and came up with this label to be able to create music underneath their daily mainstream lives. Mm -hmm. It's not a massive label, it's 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 an international, but Amsterdam based has almost a niche vibe as artists like Nangiti, for example, Lima Music, and and they're fantastic artists. If you go on Spotify and and, and type in I and I, actually the best place to go is SoundCloud. And type, type in I and I movement. I and I is like letter I, letter N, letter I, and then movement. And you find this repertoire of music that they have. It's jazzy, it's funky, it's grounded, it's grown up. And they're the guys I work with. Um, um, it, 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 it came together because I was kind of looking for something else to do outside the house other than be a father and be a fashion designer and be a, a, a therapist. And then making music is different because it's, it's this audio stimulation that takes you out of your regular life and elevates you to, to something else different, you mm. know? And I was doing it for the love of it. But as we went along, we, we kept making stuff. And, and we made 428 um, um, at the beginning of our, our union. Mm. Um, I think that was maybe like six, seven years ago, yeah. 428 was so made. So 428 is the first EP. Yes. And the second EP is Mantra, which was second released EP in 2020. The second EP is Mantra, which is coming out. Yeah. 
there's only one single out uh, catch a so fire. far. So good, catch a fire, and uh, catch a fire is about catching your fire and getting yourself up there on the most difficult moments. You know, like in Europe, we have in Amsterdam, we have winters. Winters get dark. Yeah, yeah. You get lonely. Nothing yeah. is happening. There's no sunshine. So you have to make your own fire from within. Of course. So catch a fire is exactly about how to make your own fire from within, mm. despite how difficult life can be. And mantra as, a, as an entire EP is about love. You know, it's, it's also a collaboration with Pitch Controller Mitch, Ribera is in it, Lee, uh, Lima is definitely in it, uh, Jobisa Nairobisa is definitely, definitely in it. You know, like all the INI guys I work with, and there's a track with uh, with Gallows Feet as well that I've done that that is so amazing. Like me as a, as a person who made the track is blown away. And I can't wait for you guys to, to, to hear it. But the latest EP mantra, which is coming out within a couple of weeks from now, they're doing the release, is about love. Actually, because today is Boxing Day, Mantra should be already actually in the media platforms. If it's not, they should just stream it. Just, just follow you and see when, what's going to be new. Biko or Duo yeah. on Instagram. Uh, Steve Biko K on, on Spotify. Steve Biko dot K. And INI Movement on SoundCloud. Once you get to those places, we'll find each other and find the music and, mm. and just catch the vibe. Mm. Yeah. I guess that's where we are going to end the show today. Catch a vibe. And by the way, we have a special gift for you. It's Boxing Day. <gasps> we couldn't just do this interview and leave you like this. Gift we have for a me. longer version. Yeah, I'm going to up straight. There's a longer version of this interview on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Boomplay, or wherever you find your podcast. So I, we know you're enjoying this conversation. So go back to the Spotify and the whatever you find your podcast and listen to the full conversation. Thank you so much, Steve Biko, Biko O two O, for coming to my podcast VIP Access, for coming to Kenya. Um, I mean, your home. Thank you, and thank you're you, welcome. thank you, thank you. I want to give you a compliment that that, that that will stay with you for the rest of your existence on this planet. You are changing the destiny of, of music in this part of the world, and you you're creating a, a solid foundation for artists like us and many others to to have a reference point, so that people who are coming after us and have something to look up to. We never had this. We never had this. You know, radio stations did stuff, with international journalism, artists did the things on their own, but there was no one coherent place where you could go and actually find a, 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 a steady story. You're the steady story. You're the backbone of this. So thank you for changing the future of music in Africa. Thank you. Wow, what a compliment. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Happy 2023 yeah, already at 2024. I guess 2024, yeah. Okay, bye. Thank you guys for watching us on VIP Access. We'll catch you next year on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of um, next week with a brand new episode. Amazing. Ciao. VIP Access. VIP Access. With Aniko on Africa Loud.